the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll. <coughs> Graham Kassoon. Here. Tobin. Is absent. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Here. Massey is absent. President Rodriguez. Here. We have a quorum. Approval minutes. Tonight we have the minutes from the October 20th council meeting. So moved. Seconded by Johnson, seconded by Alderman Green. All in favor? Aye. Correspondence. Nothing this evening. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address the council, please step forward. You have three minutes. Okay. Remarks of the mayor. Good evening. Good evening. We wanted to open with the, um, the COVID issue because if, once again, it's back into the um, major focus of uh, the city and the state and, and the nation. Um, we were on a call today with the county executive, Steve Newhouse, um, all the elected officials and emergency responders in Orange County. And um, as you can see on this, uh, Middletown is number three. Um, once again, we were down maybe four or five for a little while. But we, um, the fact is, is that the whole region and the whole state numbers are increasing. And we are been advised today by the county exec that in his phone call with the governor's office, that Middletown, Middletown area and the Newburgh area may soon be designated as a cluster area. And what that means is not good news for us in regards to um, our abilities to um, operate businesses and open public buildings. So as you can see, the case counts are on the screen. Um, but what's more disturbing is over the last, um, last week, I believe in the Middletown area or Orange County, we've had over 100 um, additional cases just in the last few days. And um, so starting, uh, this slide was made this afternoon before the call. So there's already been a change since we were, we were originally talking about closing buildings possibly on Monday because of the, um, the way things are progressing. But we um, posted on the Facebook and on our city social media today um, a, that all public buildings will be closed once again tomorrow starting at 8 o'clock. And basically in effect with this meeting, we're letting people in. Um, there's only a couple people here from the public, but um, all public buildings will be closed, but except for emergency access. Um, people can call if they need a death certificate or a birth certificate. They can call. There's things that we can do online. So we're just not letting people into the building to conduct business. So, um, what we did last time back in March and April, if you had a bill that you wanted to pay, we had met you outside or into the lobby area and, and, and took care of your business there. So the offices will not physically be closed. The buildings are going to be very much restricted. So saying closed is... Um, is the term we're using, but they're more or less restricted. And that goes for all buildings. Um, let me just stay on that for a second. <clears throat> that deals with, uh, I sent out an uh, email to all department heads earlier in the evening regarding training, regarding access into the recreation centers, um, any public building, police station, city hall, senior center has been closed. But whatever business the city hall is doing must, um, our city people are doing in city buildings must cease or be very much restricted down to a minimal. Um, the, the other part is the, um, the ability for city workers to follow guidelines. One thing we are getting on all of the governor's messages is that it's up to local police to enforce guidelines. Um, it's a little unclear of what people can be charged with. Um, we're not going to be looking in your windows on Thanksgiving to see if you have uh, 11 people or 12 people in your, in your house. It's good. Um, you know, they, they're strongly recommending from Dr. Fauci on down that you not have large gatherings in your homes. But what we, um, we're encouraging people to do in their homes is use common sense. And, um, but the police are not going to be looking in your doors unless you're having a large group, a very large group of people in your in your neighborhood and we get a call from one of your neighbors, of course, the police will respond. But 
that's different than public buildings and public facilities. So um, as for public restaurants, the governor put out an um, effective last Friday that everyone had to be out of restaurants and bars by 10 p.m. Um, we did patrol in quite a few areas and did a lot of spot checks on different businesses. And that will increase. And the threat all along has been from the governor and from the state health officials is if I'm not shutting down New York State anymore, mm -hmm. but what I will do and what I have done is shut down regions of the state that are not um, either not following the guidelines or are in a position where their numbers are increasing, where it, it's, um, we have to, they have to take some kind of action. So that brings us back to the cluster. And if we get categorized tomorrow um, as possibly we expect as a yellow cluster, um, the houses of worship will be at 50%, which they may be now. Some of this might be relevant to the existing rules. Uh, mass gatherings will be um, up to 25 people maximum indoors and outdoors. Right now, you can have a gathering of up to 50 people, um, or, except for at your house, and um, you know the, they're encouraging you not to do it. Um, Businesses will remain open and indoor and outdoor dining uh, four person maximum per table. And schools will then be required to do mandatory weekly testing of students, teachers, and staff for in person um, uh, learning. So the yellow is just a little bit more stringent than what we're operating under now. But if we're, our numbers continue to increase and we go to orange, that reduces houses of worship down to um, a maximum of 25 people, uh, 10 people maximum indoor and outdoor of mass gatherings, which I believe we're at now in some, in some cases. Um, they will close uh, high-risk non-essential businesses like gyms and, and, uh, and personal care facilities. Dining will be limited to outdoor dining only, and I don't know too many people that will be doing outdoor dining in this kind of weather. And schools would be closed and go to remote only. So um, it's, it's a concern. So we're asking people for cooperation. If you do go into a store, um, we're getting a lot of complaints about convenience stores, and the people are not wearing masks, call the police. The police will respond. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to have to work something out about chronic offenders where we then can get the task force involved and hopefully the district attorney will prosecute. But we need to, um, we need to react to this, otherwise we're going to be in, in, a, in a big jam um, over the next few weeks. Speaking of that, uh, we, on the positive side, uh, the construction in downtown is continuing. The James Street lots, are both are open today. They will probably possibly shut down the, um, the motor vehicle side tomorrow to finish landscaping, but we'll be going back and forth. Uh, Marie and I are working on a parking management plan, and we'll keep, keep you informed. I think we gave you an update once before on the parking management, on uh, the two-hour, three-hour, and um, overnight parking. It seems to be working, but again, we're not at full capacity with business. So uh, we're, we're planning as if we're going to be reopening in the next couple months full staff with business. So uh, so the, if you see empty spots, you wonder why we won't let people park overnight in that lot, there's a reason for it because part of it is how, you know, changing people's behaviors. This is the Henry Street lot right behind City Hall. I know many city employees are waiting for this lot to be reopened. Um, unfortunately for them, we are not going to reopen this for City of Middletown employee parking. <laughs> They're going to be uh, maintained parking at St. Paul's and at the Canal Street and at the Mulberry House. And this will be public parking for businesses and tenants in the downtown Middletown area and the Heritage Trail. Tonight you have a resolution um, on winter parking. We, um, normally we start at the, uh, the 15th with uh, no overnight parking. Um, this has been bounced around for a couple of years in many different forms with alternate side of the street parking, um, something that I was um, supportive of. Um, but there are issues that were raised by council members and by um, predominantly by the uh, Commissioner of Public Works, Jacob Tweel, um, 
being a city with many narrow streets, we felt that it might not be the best route to go, at least at this time. So we've come up with somewhat of a compromise position where by permit, people who would qualify will be able to leave their car out in the street for um, on days that it's not raining or snowing or freezing rain or snowing. Uh, a lot of the burden is going to fall on the property owner to you know, sign up for Nixle or to um, stay in communication on city social media for when there's a snow alert um, that they are then responsible for getting their car off of the off of the street or they are subject to a ticket. And if it's you know several abuses or quite a few abuses, I'm not sure what the number is, um, we can revoke the permit. So this is to address people that do not have a driveway or a two-family home that only has a driveway for one family. And that's the eligibility. There are no exceptions that if your house has three cars and your driveway only holds two, you will have to make those arrangements to go to a public parking area and shuttle back and forth, as I'm assuming you do now. It's also going to come with some enforcement regarding parking on lawns, which we see quite a bit of in the, um, um, in the wintertime. And it's become a year-round thing now. It's not even just wintertime. People are parking on their lawn on a year-round basis, so we're going to see more enforcement in that area. This is a pilot project for 2020-21. I want to thank um, Alderman Green for bringing it forward as somewhat of a compromise, and we'll see how this works, and we'll see what trouble we have, if any, with, uh, with people um, abusing the system or, or just being forgetful or, or whatever, whatever the problems can be. But rest assured, if it snows, if there's any precipitation, you are the responsible party for getting that vehicle off the street. There are requirements that they sign up for Nixle, which is the city communication system. And there's other requirements in here. But overall, it's a, it's a fair compromise to at least take the heavy burden off of some of the people who are paying uh, up to, I believe, $150 a month for private parking. So, um, And these are people that have no driveways whatsoever. And that's all available on our, on our website. The 2021 budget. Um, Don Paris uh, did an excellent job in the uh, treasurer's office. Uh, I want to thank the council president for all his hard work. And also uh, Alderman Massey, who is, uh, is home this evening, hopefully watching. Uh, the Board of Estimate did adopt the budget. And uh, we have some highlights that have been discussed with the Common Council earlier. And as you can see, the different categories, operations, special items, personal services, employee benefits and, and debt service. Uh, debt service is down a little bit. Employee benefits is up. Personal services down a little. Special items up a little and, and operations up a little bit. Um, the big increases in the budget were pension, which is 8.86% um, increase. In fact, that was, um, and when, you, when we get down to the rate, you'll see that there is a, it's a dual rate this year. Um, we are under the tax cap, although I don't believe there's any benefit to the, I don't know if the, the um, homeowners are going to get a refund check this year from us being under the cap. But the total increase is about 3.1 and change. They rounded up to 3.2. Um, and the problem is that uh, of that, about 0.86 is this one-time pension charge for police and fire uh, retirement. It was a significant amount of money, of which 200 and something thousand was eligible to be applied to the tax cap. But overall, the increase in pension, as you can see, went from uh, 3.2 to 3.7, an 8.86 increase. Workman's comp, 3.3. Another big area, or the largest area of increase, um, is the um, health insurance costs, which went up over 17% and payroll taxes, another up a little number, 4%. So I, as I was saying, the tax cap um, is, the 2% tax cap is never 2%. Um, most of the years it's been a little bit lower because of the adjustments, what's eligible uh, for tax cap. You just can't go out and borrow money and say it's, it's um, exempt from the tax cap. So they do have a formula. Don works out the formula each year for us. 
Uh, the one-time pension adjustment um, is, and the reason why we separate it the way we did is because it is a one-time adjustment and it will be factored in next year into the cap. So we're going to have a 3.2 increase. The change, I believe, um, is about $81 on the average home. The water and sewer rates are not increasing at all. So there's a net, the combined rate is $17 in the um, 2020, and the combined water sewer rate for 2021 is also $17 per thousand. The tax levy numbers are there for 21. Uh, there is no general fund um, balance transfers into this budget. So we're not using any of our savings. We have made some assumptions. One assumption is we've reduced the sales tax slightly, as Don mentioned to the committee, by about a half a million dollars. Uh, we have some sale of real property, which are one-shot revenues, um, but we're very confident that we will meet those one-shot revenues. And I believe that's about all I have. This summary on the last page is all the different funds that the city manages. And we have five different funds. Um, the general fund is 42 million plus the water fund is about seven and a half million. Um, I can't read it, but the sewer funds about six million. And then community development is about 700,000 plus. Golden area is about 130 something thousand dollars. Golden area is the subsidy to the bus operation. That is not a, you know, we get a slight subsidy from the county transportation, but the overwhelming majority of senior bus operations is subsidized by Middletown taxpayers. And the total combined budgets is around $56, $57 million. And that's all I have other than wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, happy and safe Thanksgiving. And hopefully people will follow the guidance um, issued by the governor's office and stay to 10 or under. Alderman, Alderman Johnson. Uh, Mayor, under the uh, ban line, we have a we have an action item tonight for three million. How does that fit into this document? All of the all of the debt services in here, and you, including the, tonight's, including tonight's. The the debt that you see on the on here is current debt. There is no um, um, bond anticipation notes are factored in with our long term debt too. So there's no nothing new here. Okay. Our debt actually went down, if I remember right there, uh, because some bonds were retired. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, the so it went down for 2.381 to 2.234. So we're, we're okay on debt. And then with respect to the parking, uh, you and I discussed a resident in the third ward, uh, a landlord, two-family two home. He wanted to know if he was eligible for permit. His driveway probably holds two vehicles. Yes. So no eligibility parking. No eligibility. The, if I have the a two-family home with one, what if I can only fit one car in my driveway and it's a two-family home? Well, then you would be eligible. Okay. Because there would be one spot per unit. Okay. I just want to be clear on that. And, and it's stacking, too, is, you know, we're not going to get into uh, <laughs> who's, who's in the driveway first. We're, we're doing this, keep in mind, without 100% support of the men who do the plowing. They're very concerned about it. So um, as we approach this, we want to walk. And we want to see how it goes this year. Gotcha. We want to get people signed on to Nixel. I encourage people to, to really sign up for it for all the city emergencies, but this one is a requirement of the permit. So we, it's almost like behavior modification a little bit. Exactly if it works like this year, then maybe we can expand upon it a little bit next year. And uh, maybe we'll give uh, Jacob Blues a little bit more here, and we'll eventually get to Alton inside of the street parking. No, he won't do that. <laughs> well, Thank you very much. Up. Appreciate it. Here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Remarks to the department heads, economic development. Good evening. Uh, just to update you on our uh, the public hearing for this Friday uh, to amend our 2019 action plan to allow us to allocate the COVID round three funds and the funds to be used to rehab 8-10 Mulberry Street in order to re relocate the Greater Middletown Interfaith Council warming station. So the public hearing is uh, this Friday at 2, 2 p.m. Then there'll be a comment period from November 20th to the 30th 
and then we will prevent, uh, not prevent, <laughs> provide <laughs> and present the amendment to uh, you folks on December 1st to approve the submission to HUD. So that's the timeline on the, on the COVID money. Um, also, um, we've started, since we can't do the, next week would have been the annual tree lighting downtown, and since that won't be taking place due to COVID and, and construction, as you see, Festival Square is really coming out nicely. And uh, so we put our heads together with the Business Improvement District, and we are going to be ro rolling out a holiday season in a safe manner. So we are going to do some downtown virtual tree lightings and more to, more to be announced. And our, our guest Santa has agreed to come back and, and do these virtual lightings for us. So we're going to be working hard in the next week to, uh, to get this all planned out and strategically placed through the downtown so we could do the virtual tree lightings. And like I said, it will be on our Facebook, our websites and everything and more information and details to come and we figured you know what we holiday spirit's gotta it's gotta keep going and uh, we, we found a safe way to do so also we'll be rolling out a uh, marketing uh, program for businesses to tap into you know some ideas on on uh, decorating downtown decorating citywide businesses and then also small business Saturday that brings me to and Small Business Saturday, um, promotions that are gonna uh, be available. Basically, I'm gonna give you some statistics f from the US uh, Small Business Administration. There are 31.7 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.9% .9 of all firms with paid employees in the, in the US and are responsible for 65.1% of new uh, net jobs and created between 2000 and 2019. Small businesses employ 47.1% of the employees in the private sector in the US. And 97% of consumers who shopped on Small Business Saturday agree that small businesses are essential to their community. So that brings me uh, tonight, uh, the mayor would like to present a Small Business Saturday proclamation and this is one of our promotions that we're going to be rolling out for not just the downtown, but for the entire city for businesses. So, Mayor, uh, if you could do the honors. Yeah, why not? And this is this is a national thing, also, right? This is through the small the small business associations. It's hard to read with glasses fogging up. <laughs> And I won't read the whole thing, but it's whereas the city of Middletown, New York, celebrates our local small businesses um, and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 31.7 million small businesses in the United States, and they represent 99.9% 99 .9 of all firms with paid employees in the United States. So without reading the rest of that, and the whereas are the, whereas the city of Middletown, New York, supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our communities. And whereas advocacy groups, as well as the public and private organizations across the country, have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving, a small business Saturday. Now, therefore, I, Joseph M. DeStefano, Middletown, Mayor of Middletown, New York, do hereby proclaim November 28th as Small Business Saturday and urge the residents of our community and surrounding communities across the country to support the small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday throughout the year. And keep in mind, a lot of small businesses are hurting, and hopefully there'll be a federal stimulus. I'm sure Jerry's gonna approach something um, under his remarks on the federal level, but um, they, they really need a boost. So I'm happy to sign it and make this declaration and more Middletown can be a small part of it. Thank you, Maria. I just wanted to mention one more thing on the snow because I did forget it. We are going to change the dates also. So we're going to reduce the amount of off-street parking by basically a month. We're going to begin on 12-1. The legislation calls for cars to be removed by December 1st and off the road, um, back on the road on March 15th. Keep in mind, though, if next week it snows, there is a city ordinance that if we get two inches or two and a half inches of snow that you need to remove your car from the street 
regardless of the time of year. So if it snowed in July and there was two and a half inches of snow in the street, you need to move your car so we can plow. But that's crazy, but um, the point being made is that you need, to, we're gonna move these dates, we're gonna shorten it by a month, but we need cooperation of everyone. That's all I have, thanks. <clears throat> I just want a, a shout out to uh, Jacob and and uh, his department. Uh, they managed to get the wreaths up uh, throughout the downtown, so those are going to be lit as well next week. And I know with everything coming out so great at Festival Square and, and looking and for next year, bigger and better tree lighting. So we all look forward to that. And uh, everyone, stay safe and stay tuned for our friend Santa to do some virtual tree lightings in our downtown. That's all I have. Thank you, Maria. Questions? Or? Any other questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. DPW Commissioner. Good evening, all. Um, we'll start off the mayor and Maria. They spoke about the downtown green infrastructure parking lots, which are being open and um, they look nice, a new pavement, a new uh, layout, and so on and so forth. But what's important about them really is the green infrastructure uh, elements that have been implemented in there. And um, the idea behind them is to absorb or take all this storm water when you have heavy rain event and direct it into underground uh, seepage, basically to recharge the groundwater, clean the water before it goes into uh, our uh, storm system as well as well as implementing and planting a lot of green infrastructure, meaning uh, trees and shrubs and um, biofilters in there. And the whole idea is to minimize uh, the storm uh, runoff and the flooding that we have in the city. And um, this is really a great, uh, great uh, addition to this project. So uh, we're really very proud of it. And as you can see, you just wait a little bit until you see all this uh, green uh, planting uh, comes out and it's going to look very nice and it's going to help the environment and uh, it's going to be it's going to contribute towards uh, climate change in a positive manner by having that green infrastructure. And then I just want to touch on something in there on the much on the mature trees that people I can see people around the city. They're taking them down, you know, beautiful trees. And people, they are moving sometimes from New York City, basically, to here, and they are not familiar with the trees, and they see a tree, they see danger. <laughs> Many times, it's not really danger. The tree is a tremendous asset to your property. Um, studies show that mature trees will add 10% to the value of your property. 10%, that's a lot of money in there. And it contributes significantly to the environment by absorbing all, all that moisture instead of having that runoff absorbing the moisture and the, and the runoff and um, into, into the tree, and as well as contributing to minimizing the CO2, which is a green, uh, green, uh, greenhouse effect uh, gas in there that is a tremendous uh, uh, disadvantage to the environment. So anyway, so the point is, please preserve the trees, especially the mature trees. If you take something down, plant another tree or two to replace it. It's great to the environment. It's great to you personally and to the value to, of your property. So please remember that. It adds 10% to the value of the property. That's what uh, research have, have shown. Um, Alderman Massey is not here, but maybe he's watching on TV. Our reservoirs are at 88% capacity. Uh, we're still hovering. We still need more rain. So, um, but we're in very good shape, uh, capacity of our reservoirs. Leaves pick up. DPW has been going around. We finished the second ward. We finished the third ward. We're halfway done into the fourth ward. And then we'll go to the first ward. Then we'll, then we'll start again. Second, third, fourth, and first. And hopefully the weather will cooperate and we're not going to have any snow until we clean the city completely uh, from the leaves. Um, Davish Park, I think the mayor may have spoke about it. And I know Alderman Rodriguez, Council President Rodriguez, uh, Alderman Johnson, Alderman Ramkasun, they're very interested in this project. The mayor, the mayor finally signed the, uh, uh, the uh, Davish Park expansion. 
contract with the general contractor, so it's signed. The EC, the electrical contractor, has been signed a while ago. We had to resolve some legal issue between the attorneys. That's been resolved. The mayor signed it today, so we're looking to set up a pre-construction meeting as soon as possible with the GC and the EC to get this uh, project started. The good news is the 12-inch water main, high-pressure water main replacement through the park has been done already. So, God forbid if something happens to the old water main that runs about 15 foot below the uh, surface of the ground uh, through the park, the proposed park expansion, we're not going to have a big disaster. We can shut it off, but we still have to commission the new one, which hasn't been done yet. Uh, so that's, we don't have to bother. Uh, they can just continue building the park without having to worry about the 12-inch high-pressure water main because the new one has been installed. It's not commissioned yet, but it will be. <coughs> um, ADA curbs and sidewalks in there. You can see them done. Granite curb, beautiful work. Really, Sunup have done a tremendous job for us throughout the downtown area with the curbs and sidewalks. And again, that's a grant um, with a small uh, city subsidy uh, to the grant. And um, today we've done the tour with DOT. They came, they audited all the records for the project. There were some minor items in there that needed to be addressed by the engineer and the contractor. But all in all, it's, it's, it's a very good, and the DOT were happy with it, and the bookkeeping, and, and so on. So now we're preparing for a shutdown for the winter after we complete, which is almost we're done with the downtown, new curbs and sidewalks after that. In the spring, they're going to start on Dolson Avenue. And that's where uh, the fourth ward uh, comes in. And there we're going to be installing brand new sidewalks all the way to city, from Republic Plaza all the way to city line. So people to encourage walkers, less cars, less CO2 uh, emission, and so on. Um, the Heritage Trail, you're going to be su suing, seeing some work done at the bridges, uh, at the bridge crossing for Janang Street and for uh, Sprague Avenue. And these are the last few items that need to be done in the Heritage Trail Phase 2. And then after that, the trail will be opened up from Walker River, basically, or Hartley Road in Goshen, all the way to the Switch and or East Main Street in downtown, uh, Middletown. Um, the, before you tonight, there is a $3, a $3 million borrowing in there. It's a ban. It's only temporary in there to fund our... Um, Water, uh, watershed protection for our reservoirs. And it's basically, um, as you know, we were, uh, we were successful in obtaining $6 million grants for purchasing watershed around our main uh, Shuangan kill that supplies our reservoirs with water. And um, right now we're closing, we're getting ready to close in major purchases. One of them is eliminating a horse farm a horse, yeah, horse farm, basically, and training facility that really contributes runoff into our watershed, into the Shuangan Kill, and we're very close to purchasing that property. Yeah. We've done all the paperwork, and that's about two and a half million dollars, and and uh, and that's the three million dollar in there is to get the mayor ready to sign the um, closing on these paper on these uh, properties, so we can purchase them. That's a great improvement for city of Middletown and to preserve its watershed and to make sure that we continue to have clean water going into our reservoirs for generations to come. It's not only, this is not a plan for tomorrow or the day after. It's for, uh, honestly, for 100 years. It's not, it's not exaggeration. This is what our founding fathers did for us, and they purchased all this watershed to go into our reservoirs, and this is what we're doing our part in there to try to get grants, we, and we got the $6 million to purchase more property to protect more of our watershed and to keep our uh, raw water clean as it is right now in um, coming into our faucets at home. Uh, the mayor and I participated in, um, really this is major, uh, we were able to secure $13.4 million in there in additional funding for the traffic operations. We talked about it before, we were telling, we, were, we kept you updated, we're trying to do it, we're trying to do it, now it's done. Uh, the last meeting the mayor and I participated in, Orange County Transportation Council voted and the change in funding has taken place now that the total project cost is $21 million in there. So we were successful to obtain an additional $13.4 million in, in uh, last week conference phone call and the uh, final vote. And this is tremendous. That's going to be, it's going to, 
uh, contribute tremendous, um, tremendously to our downtown, to our throughout the city of Middletown. Every signalized intersection is going to be ADA compatible. It's going to have the pedestrian crossing in there suitable for blind person or deaf person. And it's going to have the state of the art synchronized um, traffic uh, signal, signalized intersections, they're going to be synchronized, meaning that it's going to be timed to minimize your stop and go at every green light. You go to the red light, and then red light goes to the green, and so on and so forth, like what happens in 211, similar to what happens uh, to, on 211, stop and go, stop and go. This will minimize again. Uh, you can look at this as also as a green a green project in there to minimize emission in there by cars stopping and going, stopping and going. Hopefully everything will be going smooth throughout the city of Middletown, minimize traffic jams, minimize, minimize accidents, uh, and so on. I will stop with this reporting. Uh, this, uh, there's more projects to report on, but I'll stop right now if you have any questions. <clears throat> any questions for Jacob? Alden Johnson. I just had the clarification. So the Mount Hope training track, that's a source of agricultural waste. Is that, is that what you were saying? Yes. All these years? Yes, yes, absolutely. It right, right before, right in Shawanga Kilda, right? Yes, it pours into our main supply. Our main, our lifeline is the uh, is the Shawanga Kill. That's Kench Reservoir. Well, there's been a lot of horses on that property over there. That is a lot of horses, and eliminating that, taking it out for two and a half million dollars, that will be divid pay dividends for us for for years and years. Mm -hmm. well, comes with horses. Well done. Okay. Oh, that's another my day project, job. Thank another, you very much. <laughs> another project really is, is uh, the mayor will talk about it at some point, but uh, we're, 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 gotcha. we're very happy with this progress, yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jacob. Yep. City Treasurer. Uh, nothing this evening unless anybody has a question. Any questions for Don? Thank you, Don. Police Chief. Good evening. I have nothing this evening unless anyone has a question for me. Any question for the police chief? Thank you, chief. City clerk. No, I have nothing either. Any question for John? <laughs> all right. Reports of Alderman, Alderman Green. Thank you very much. Um, I do, um, Maria and, and everyone involved, the downtown is really coming along quite well. It's uh, amazing. I drive through every morning, and every morning it looks like a whole week's worth of progress has been done uh, again. So everyone's really working hard at it and it's looking phenomenal. Um, I wanna thank uh, the mayor, uh, police chief, uh, DPW commissioner and, and city clerk, everyone here involved uh, with the winter parking project. Um, I've heard some, some great things from uh, the people who've seen what we've been doing and uh, you know, I hope everyone uh, follows along with it and we can have a, uh, a, a good year for it. Um, other than that, I just want to wish everyone a uh, happy, safe Thanksgiving and uh, hope everyone uses common sense, stay smart, stay safe, wear a mask, social distance, and uh, we'll get through it all. So have a good holiday. Thank you. Alderman Johnson. Thanks. Uh, so a week or two ago, or a meeting or two ago, I asked Public Works about Wall Street or Field, what the timeline was, and I uh, was told we would start this year and finish next year. So I'm glad they were sticking to that timeline. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. All very soon. I just wanted, with the closing of City Hall, to remind the Third Ward residents that uh, with the dropping temperatures, we will not be trying for an outdoor meeting, so the meeting for November will be canceled <laughs> as of this time for next week. Um, that being said, uh, I just want to wish everyone a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and I know we all lost a little something in 2020, but maybe we can all take a minute and be thankful for what we do have. So, happy Thanksgiving. Alderman Kleiner. Um, thank you, Don. Thank you and everyone in the department for the work on the budget. This was a tough year to do a budget, so uh, congratulations. Um, as the mayor said, um, yeah, we don't have any hope of uh, state and local funding yet from a, a national level. Um, but uh, with the new administration, and there will be a new administration, <laughs> Uh, we we hope that that's uh, we hope that that will be restored at least to a degree where we can protect the public health and safety. That's what it's all about. It's not about red states and blue states. It's about keeping everyone safe, and that's that's what government's main job is: protecting public health and safety. And uh, you know, I I I was confused because I thought. Operation Warp Speed was about 
spreading the vaccine, but apparently Operation Warp Speed was about spreading the virus. And we've been very successful at doing that, the, the country right now, as we know, and uh, we heard from the mayor how that's going to affect the city, but all over the country, um, it's, it's unbelievable. We have a war against the virus, but we're not asking anyone to make any sacrifice. I mean, my God, wearing a mask, you know, it's just too much for people. So uh, I don't understand it. I don't understand when a party becomes a death cult and says uh, 250,000 people, well, that's okay. They would have died anyway, eventually. So um, I, I, just, I just can't not comment on it. Um, <laughs> It's, it's just, it's, it's beyond, uh, it's almost beyond comment. But again, um, we won't have a tree. People have asked me, are we gonna have a tree this year? And I said, N no, not, not, you know. But we'll look forward to next year and, and uh, our annual tree lighting and, and uh, pre-holiday celebration. And I'm hoping it will come back bigger and better than ever. So I um, wish everyone a very safe and healthy and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Alderman John Francois. Thank you, good evening. Every year I look forward for the uh, budget to see what's gonna look like, uh, but uh, Don and his staff always come through. Thank you for that every year. We look forward to uh, have a, a good uh, budget this year and years to come. Uh, you always do a good job, uh, you and your staff. And I'm delighted for the, the ADA curbside uh, walk. We've been looking for, uh, to, for that project to start on Dawson. And it's, it's amazing when you're driving on Dawson, you see people walking with a sidewalk. It's, you kind of cringe. There's also a gentleman that's riding a scooter. And it's, it looks so terrifying. So I'm looking forward for that project to start. I think it's, it's a long time coming. Uh, hopefully we'll get it together in the springtime. Thank you. Alderman Burr. Just want to wish everybody a happy, safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. New business. <clears throat> we have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Green to accept the third period award with the county for stop w DWI enforcement period November 6th through January 1st, 2021. Resolution possible, Alderman Green, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Bro. Rem Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Johnson Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. <clears throat> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green to approve a wintertime parking permit system. Resolution possible, Alderman Green, second by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Bro. Rem Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution uh, sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize Corporation Council and the City Treasurer to hold a tax lien sale on Saturday, December 19th at 10 a.m. at the Senior Center. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. <clears throat> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to approve and adopt the aforesaid annual budget for 2021. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Cassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by all the women, Ram Kassoon, to accept an award of $5,100 to participate in the statewide child passenger safety program. Resolution sponsored by all Ram Kassoon, seconded by all the Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to accept an award from the County of Orange in the amount of $5,280 for the Stop DWI Enforcement Crackdown for 2020 and 2021. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. 
resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the mayor to sign an annual renewal agreement with PERMA for their third party administration services. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to authorize the treasurer to transfer $47,357.24 within the Parks and Recreation Department to fund an excavator for park improvement projects. Resolution passed by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Ray Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green to authorize the acceptance and adoption of a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan update for Orange County. Resolution responsible Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Roderick? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution responsible Alderman Johnson, authorizing the issuance of three million fifty thousand dollar serial bonds to pay the cost of land acquisition in the town of Mount Hope for water source protection for the city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Green. Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Move for adjournment. Move, move. So move, second, aye. <laughs> Uh, you too. Happy to start.